What is up, you guys? So we are actually getting ready to head out to the greenhouse, but I did want to go ahead and switch my laundry before we went. I know that's kind of weird for maybe a gardening video, but this is real life, and I'm trying to get some things done. My husband took my daughter, and uh, I've got to get this done, but I can still chat with you while I'm doing stay-at-home mom things. So today we're actually going to talk about um, what to do when your seedlings come up. I've had quite a few seedlings come up in my greenhouse. My greenhouse is not heated. Last night it got down to like 30. My peas and my brassicas, which are your, like your broccoli, cauliflower, kale, those will all be fine. I hope. <laughs> Okay, let's head out to the greenhouse. Oh, my dogs went out. Hold on. You guys want to come out with me? Come on. Three dogs and a cat. Come on. Okay, let's go out to the greenhouse. These beds are so bare right now. Somebody's been digging. Was it you? Was it you digging? It's 60 degrees in here right now. It's 42 degrees outside, so. And the sun coming down over there is so pretty. Some little swish chard coming up. This one and this. And this one. Nice. Spinach. So here's a little pea shoot. Now a lot of people will just grow these for the for the shoots and break them off and eat them like in salads. But look at that little tendril. You see it? And look. Look what's even more exciting. The roots are coming out of the bottom. Isn't that so, that's just crazy. No roots coming out of the geraniums though. So this is why I believe um, that it's taking so long for these seeds to germinate over here is because seeds need at least, you know, 70 and up to germinate. Um, that's kind of their ideal temp. And I have not had these on a heat mat. I have not done anything additional to these things besides leave them in my greenhouse. And at night, it gets just as cold in this greenhouse as it does outside. So it could get down to 30 degrees in here at night. Now you can see my peas have done great. The only thing I'm hoping is that I haven't stunted my geraniums. Um, peas can handle a light frost. Um, everything, the broccoli, the Brussels sprouts, the spinach, the the onions, the Swiss chard, everything can handle a light frost that I have started in here. But the geraniums, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that they can handle a light frost. Oh, somebody wants in the warm greenhouse. Would you like in? Come on, bits. Come on. Good girl. Oh, you want in too? Come on. The other day we were out here and I don't know if I don't know if you guys uh, watched that video but me and my daughter were out here and we were sowing radish seeds <laughs> and she grabbed the whole package and dumped them in her little bucket that she plays in and we've got some germinating so I'm, I'm impressed I'm excited got one here and here we've got just a little of them everywhere all right let's check in our flower I don't see anything germinating yet. I actually think these would really benefit from being on a heat mat. Um, I've got the Black Prince Snapdragon started. Um, I've got some zinnias and I've also got some foxgloves. Now, right now it is way too early to start zinnias. Um, zinnias typically, you know, eight to six weeks before your last frost. I still have about 10 
nine to ten weeks before my last frost um, and I do know it's early to start these but this was kind of an experiment and my idea was to put them in buckets in my greenhouse because we will be heating this when it gets a little bit closer to spring and my tomatoes and my peppers and stuff are in here we heat with a propane um, heater if you guys have a different recommendation let me know I've thought about trying to do an electric heater um, know what kind I would run there's no electricity out here but we could always run an extension cord um, tell me what you guys think about that but anyway the this is the zinnias they've not germinated they need it to be warm now during the day it gets warm but they need during the day when the Sun is out it gets warm in here it's not warm enough consistently so at night when it drops down to 30 you know that kind of stunts their germination so I may end up taking these inside and placing them on a heat mat. I have a heat mat. Oh, that sun's bright. This is the heat mat that I have. It just plugs into an outlet. And I'll link this down below um, and link it in the description. I got it on Amazon. I think it was $20. It works great, especially for peppers. Peppers want it really, really warm whenever you're germinating them. I will probably forever put my peppers on a heat mat just to get them started unless it's super warm um, consistently where you are. Some flowers and such need you know heat to get going all of these things would probably come up a lot sooner if I had them on a heat mat I was just not in a huge hurry and I was just kind of letting nature take its course and they could germinate but they have some extra protection in here so that they wouldn't get completely killed by the frost um, and I do I have these flowers in a heating dome to keep the humidity in the humidity in these uh, just helps the soil not dry out on top and like the foxgloves are super tiny seeds and so they are surface sown so if that topsoil dries out in their surface zone uh, your seeds probably are not going to germinate so you definitely don't want to risk it drying out and if the Sun is out in here and it gets up to 50 degrees outside and the Sun is out I mean it'll easily get 80 to 90 in here and the, the tops of this will dry out like before you can blink your eyes so I like to keep a humidity dome on them. A lot of people use a humidity dome on all of their seedlings. I've not really found that necessary because I do check them every five seconds. <laughs> not really, but I do check on them often and make sure that they're spritzed down. But I also put these in there just uh, to kind of give them a little bit of extra warmth throughout the day to maybe germinate a little bit quicker and keep them a little bit more snug at night and give them a little bit of extra protection. But once uh, your humidity dome is on and your seeds germinate, when there's like 50 to 75% germination, get that humidity dome off of there or your seeds are going to sprout up and get leggy super quick. A couple of other things, whenever you're starting seeds in a greenhouse, this is a little broccoli plant that I've um, moved to a different container. Um, another thing is to touch them. It really strengthens their stem and to be honest whenever you're in like if you come in here it's very stagnant there's no air flow um, so a, a fan an oscillating fan is really really good to have um, it helps keep disease you know dried up it helps just not be stagnant and it helps uh, mimic the wind so kind of strengthen your seedlings you don't want these to be in completely stagnant still air and then bam you put them outside when they're big enough and they're just super weak and they can't handle a windstorm they're gonna flatten out so that's another tip uh, that I have for you when you're starting seeds now if you don't have a greenhouse and you're starting your seeds inside I want you to make sure that you keep your light pretty close to them I typically if it's an LED light I typically keep my light um, two to three inches off of them um, an LED light does not produce a lot of heat so you don't have to worry about them necessarily burning your plant um, but you do have to worry about them getting leggy a leggy seedling is not good you can see we're out here in the greenhouse and I'm kicking myself in the booty right now because I had a cabbage that I accidentally germinated on my kitchen table and I didn't realize it <laughs> and so it got really leggy and I pinched it off the other day and I'm like dang I, I could have showed you guys that. that that was a leggy seedling so instead of this being a short stocky little guy he would be like way up here and his his stem would just be long and you know just 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 leggy I mean just truly just like straggly like a little spaghetti noodle so definitely don't uh, want that um, you can bring them back from it sometimes, but a lot of times you can't. Um, one time I started some spinach and it got so leggy 
like it was laying over in the cup like that's how leggy it was the stems were like so long and if you've ever grown spinach you know spinach is not supposed to be like that at all well I planted them out anyway I was like we're just gonna see what happens because I like to test things I like to experiment things I like to break the rules I don't like to follow you know people say you can't do this and you can't do that well I'm gonna try it because you know now I'm curious so uh I planted them out and I did get a little bit of a harvest. They did not ever come back from the legginess. They still laid over and were ugly and not pretty spinach plants. I wonder if I have a picture of that. I can try to maybe pop up on the screen for you. But anyway, um, a lot of times you can't bring them back from legginess. And please don't be discouraged if that happens to you because I cannot tell you how many times it has happened to me. Growing under a light is an art. Uh, I have never perfected it. I would much rather start in a greenhouse. You don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, is my light too low? Is my light too high? Is it going to burn them? Is it not? Are they getting enough light? Moving the light around to make sure. It's just, it's just a pain to me. But I did it for years because I did not have a greenhouse. Um, so it's doable. Don't think it's not doable. And try because it gives you knowledge and experience and you know if you just started out with a greenhouse you wouldn't know the hard the hard part of starting inside with a light so anyway make sure you keep your your babies watered it's not getting super hot in here so a lot of them's not drying out but I do want to show you this so you can see the difference in color I hope on the camera this one's dry this one's wet and you can also feel the difference, okay? Like this, I need to go get the hose and water. Um, these roots don't go down very far. When you have first have baby, baby seedlings, the roots don't go down very far. I mean, unless you're talking about those peas over there, the roots are already sticking out the bottom of the cups, which is awesome. That's what you want. They will dry out and they will die before you know it because their, their roots need water. So a lot of these are getting a little bit dry on the top and I also wanna make sure I have my seeds that are germinating over here my little on my other side I want to make sure that they stay nice and uh, moist and not dry out or we're not gonna have any germination and uh, I'm gonna go grab the water hose so you guys can see oh but I want to show you one more thing it's gonna like kind of trying to turn you <laughs> around okay so the other day when we sewed our radishes we also I took this hanging pot and filled it up about halfway probably and I sewed hmm, cherry bell radishes aren't those pretty you can see some of them are getting their true leaves you can see right here I've got a couple that I need to kind of thin out and we may do that actually actually we are gonna do that I'm gonna show you something um, some things don't like to be moved around like this but I did this last year had a perfect harvest so I'm gonna show you with these uh, instead of pinching them off and like last year this was an experiment that I did and you might not get this result every time but I'm gonna try it again because <laughs> I'm gonna try it again because if I pinched these off, they're gonna die anyway. So what's the harm in pulling them out and moving them? So let me go get the water hose and then we'll do this in a second. I also wanna show you and tell you a little bit about watering your seedlings. You guys might get to see something really funny I think my husband took off the end of the hose it was broken like it had froze and broken but I had an extra one in my greenhouse I'm gonna see if I can get it on with the water on well it's on good enough where it's not leaking. Okay. Okay. This isn't the most ideal, but it's better than just having the hose on. Okay, so I'm just going to, like these with my seeds in them, I'm just going to spritz. I use the word spritz a lot. I've noticed that since I've been editing <laughs> videos. Hang on. There. Now you can see okay so I just literally want to make sure the top of these are not dried out just 
just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and do this too. Now, the ones that are up, so you can see, I'm just gonna, like the ones, cause they're, this one over here, this one, the seeds aren't up yet. So a, a foolproof way to water your seedlings is to bottom water. So however much water you put in this tray um, is, however much water you put in this tray is what this is going to wick up. So you're not going to drown them. Um, there's, it doesn't get real hot in here right now. So in the summer, I'll fill these half to three quarters of the way full because they drink a lot. But right now, they're not drinking too much. So I'm probably just going to put like a quarter of water in this tray so that they can get what they need but not be overwatered. You may hear some people say like they don't like to go overhead like this and that's because of disease and such. I haven't found that I have ever gotten disease or anything doing that and I feel like it, it helps mimic, you know, wind and rain and like, do you see, I don't know if you could see that one. See how this fell over? You see how this one fell over? Well, it's never been through that. Like it's never had anything like that. I just totally got water all in my shoe. I'm gonna try to get this done really fast. I do like to do this uh, because it does mimic nature. And they will be going through this when they go outside. Now that my feet are all nice and soaking wet and it's cold. Okay, let's put this little guy back. But let's get to moving these radishes around. I'm gonna zoom you in a little. I have a pair of scissors. I'm just gonna go in over here where I know I'm not super close to the root. And just kind of loosen that up. Just kind of loosen that soil. I didn't break any roots. It's right here. And I'm gonna make me a hole right there and I'm gonna stick that back in there where it's not close to any other radish. Okay, and you can see we've got some here that are kind of close. Stick that in there. I don't really like that this one's right up on the edge, so I'm gonna move it. We've got, we've got a couple right here that are super close to each other. So I'm feeling like a lot of people would have just pinched these off. You can see there's not just a ton in here. I mean, there's probably a good 20, maybe 20, 20, 25 radishes, maybe. But, you know, that's just not a lot for this bucket. So I would rather try to save as much as I could um, rather than just toss them. Uh, because, as you know, this is using soil that did cost money. And we planted them, so... This could be like one side for a dinner. I know that's just, that's not very much, but this didn't take anything to sow. <laughs> and they germinated and they're going to grow by themselves. Harvest them all, slice them up, put them in an oven with some olive oil, salt and pepper. Oh my gosh. Roasted radishes. Mm, 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 mm. So good. 
we're gonna go shut the chicken coop and that's the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed it hope you maybe learned a little bit of something Okay, you guys, so that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from one gardener to another. See you guys in the next one. Bye.